Hello guys and welcome to this week's episode of You've Got Issues. I'm your host, Idia Aysian, and this is the show where you, the general public, tell us your issues. And with the help of my lovely guests, we give you tips and advice. Remember, one not experts, but two heads are better than one, or in this case, three. Today I have with me a man who is a top relationship blogger in Lagos, and he's also an expert on anything men and women. Jaro Olamofin, welcome to the show. Nice to meet you. I also have with me the CEO and founder of Urban Living Interiors, Karen Koshoni. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. Today we're going to be handling some relationship issues and we're going to take our first question from the board now. Hey, Idia. Before I got engaged, I had gotten a promotion at work that required me to work in four branches of the company around the world within two years. My husband was fully aware of the situation and we got married. The problem is I had to leave the country a month after my marriage and I have been in and out of the country for a year and a half. Now my parents are pressurizing me to get pregnant as the marriage has been over a year with no kids. What should I do? Should I succumb to the pressure or should my husband and I continue at our own pace? Oh wow. Let's start with you, Jero. What do you think? In, in conflict resolution, in psychology, there are different ways of solving this kind of situation, which is a social problem. You know, you could compromise, but I would advise you and your husband to sit down and solve this because this is between you and him. It's between your immediate family and not, like, don't involve your parents in it, you know. Solve it between yourselves and, uh, and just find a way to walk through it because if you compromise now and you succumb to them, they would always have something to say and something to say. And how many times would you always compromise and always listen to them? So solve it in-house and don't listen to what they have to say. As long as your husband is happy, that's the primary objective, that's the primary goal, so. Um, I have to agree, you know, um, really it's between the wife and the husband. You're not married to your family anymore. And as much as parents we like to dictate, it's essential that you let your parents know that. This is what my husband and I are comfortable with. This is what works for us and you stick to that because once you succumb, then it brings the added pressure again. After one child, they'll say, when are you having the second one? Exactly. <laughs> so, um, I'm really sorry that you're going through this, but you've heard from our guests, it's a tough situation and we acknowledge that. But you definitely, you definitely have to speak to your husband because there's nothing else that you can do in this kind of situation. Okay guys, let's take the second question from the board. Hey Idia, I like four girls and I go on dates with each one every week. These girls are not aware that I'm seeing other girls. However, I have been advised by my friends to pick one. But my issue is, must I pick and why? Can't I have them all and everyone is happy? There's nothing to smile about, <laughs> Sarah, please, can you, take, can you explain yourself? Can you explain for this? Being the man in the house. Can you explain for the men. Well, um, why this is not okay. He said everyone is happy. Everybody is, everybody is happy based on deception because you're not telling everybody the truth. Yeah. If everybody knows the truth, everybody <laughs> is the no. one that's happy. <laughs> Nobody will be happy and you can't date everybody. I think, you know, I may get bitten for this. I think it's kind of a little bit necessary okay. for a man to... No, no, Listen. Try different waters? Yes, before he commits. So he knows what he wants. Seriously. If he doesn't sleep with all of them though, right? He doesn't have to sleep with all of them. Okay. Dinner, courtship, basketball, yeah, that's that's movies. Fine. That's fine. Is it okay for a woman to do that as well? Yes, it is. That's a good one. That's, I just learned something new. Karen. So I want to look at it in a good light that, like we were saying, he was saying that they're dating or he's dating rather. But, you know, on the funny side, nah, in this economy, <laughs> I'm going to say, <laughs> let's see how long this is going to last. Exactly. But you know what, this is a big problem that we, I mean, honestly, as women that we deal with in Nigeria, I don't know about other countries, <sighs> but you know, it's, um, it's a constant thing that women are always complaining about. So yeah. to hear it coming from a man's point of view, please, we do have a big problem with this. Date one woman, see one woman. <laughs> You know, but I suppose if it's dating, like he's rightly said, you know, sometimes even, I mean, and I say for young people, um, it's probably, I, I find also that young people sometimes get too involved in some relationships, whereas it's a time that you try and meet other people, you know, and you're not 
um, you having you know intimate relationships but then you're trying to find the right person and if that's what he's doing well fair enough you know yeah. um, trying to meet other people but if he's you know if these are relationships on an intimate level then you know there's a bit of exposure well, thank you guys so much for this wonderful episode and thank you Urban Living for this amazing location and to you guys back home for watching. Don't forget that you can join the conversation by hashtagging YGI or acting Spice TV Africa on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We've come to the end of our episode unfortunately but you can catch us next week, same time and same station. Mwah.